Welcome to this session one to look at 2023 WASE Civic Education OBJ. That's objective questions. So I want you to join me and look at why uh, how these questions are being answered. Uh, <clears throat> question number one says which of the following is important for sustainable human relations? In the society it tests your knowledge on values is it uh, rehabilitation rehabilitation of course this is what you give to victims of certain circumstances like human trafficking and the rest of them is it cultural affinity uh, yeah that is important in intercommunal relationship uh, but it's not what we are talking about here is it birth religious uh, registration of course for sustainable human relationship in the society birth registration is not very necessary but when you talk about sustainable human relations in the society you talk about tolerance that is ability to put up with other people's uh, way of life that are different from ours question number two says the machinery through which the will of the state is driven is this is described as actually here we're talking about um government as an institution of the state of course the machinery here we're not talking about administration you're not talking about the rule of law which is the supremacy of uh, law over everybody you're not talking about customs and tradition the machinery responsible for carrying out the will of the state is the government and when we say state here we are referring to countries it's the government that carries out the will of the state <clears throat> number three a major attributes an individual will likely exhibit if not contented is <clears throat> let's look at b irresponsibility or no is it dishonesty? No. When one is not going, it's not dishonesty that the person will exhibit immediately. Now, the problem is this. Is it jealousy? Is it greediness? There are two contesting um, options. But when you look at it closely, jealousy is when you always look at other people's own. When you are not contented with your own, what you have, what happens is that you want to get more all the time. And that is when it's not really jealousy that steps in. What comes in immediately is greed. You want to acquire more than you should have. So it's greediness. Then <clears throat> question number four says, <clears throat> standard rules and the criteria that determine acceptable norms that influence a cordial relationship and the society are referred to as remember when we treated most repeated topics we mentioned the first one as values there are standards rules and criteria that are cherished as acceptable norms so these values are not attitudes is not uh, attitudes can be positive or negative is not conventions that's a acceptable way of doing things for a very period of time no regulations rather it's values the next question question number five says under the 1999 constitution as amended the right to secede is that secession means um, a situation where one part of the country pulls out to become a sovereign territory. So we are asking you whether to succeed is what in Nigerian Constitution 1 given to the federal government rights is given to the central, uh, federal government. No. The uh, federal government does not have the right. And uh, C says Resident in local government in the federation, they are not given the right. Is allowed to any state? A allowed to any state in the federation? No, 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 no. No state is prohibited. The right to secede is prohibited. 
therefore be denied to all states in the federation is the correct option the right to secede is prohibited so no state has the power to secede that is pulled out to form its own independent territory the Nigerian Tribune newspaper was established by who? Who established Nigeria Tribune? Is it about Macaulay? About Macaulay is known for Lagos Daily News. Is it uh, Inahoro? Is an editor? Is it Ahmad Bello? Is not known for any media. Rather, Nigerian Tribune is associated with Obafemi Awolo, Chief Obafemi Awolo. <coughs> A person born in Ghana by Nigerian parents and resides in Ghana is a citizen of is it Ghana by naturalization? This question tests your knowledge on ways of acquiring citizenship. Of course, the person can be a Ghanaian by naturalization because to be a citizen by natural of a country by naturalization, one, you have to be of age. Two, you have to be there for a long time. Three, you have to follow the process, even swell and end the swell oath of allegiance. Is it C, Nigeria by registration? Of course, the person will not register to be Nigeria. D, is it Ghana by birth? No, Ghana does not recognize being born in their country as a citizen. Now, is it Nigeria by birth? Yes, if you read chapter 3 of 1999 constitution that talks about citizenship by birth means that either of your parents are nigerian Niger your parents are nigerian so wherever they give birth to you as long as your parents are nigerian citizens you are a nigerian citizen by birth whether born in nigeria or not in nigeria now the payment of residential utility bills is the duty of who? Is it the federal government that will pay residential utility bills? No. Is it the state government that will pay utility bills? No. Is the local government, is citizens that pay residential utility bill for residing in a particular place and the bills they should pay as citizens, not the government? Question number nine says, an inalienable right enjoyed by citizens of a state be denied to non-citizens is a right to. Here we are talking about civic right. Rights that or rights of citizens and the ones that only citizens can enjoy. Well, fair hearing is given to citizens and non-citizens in a state is not the exclusive preserve of non-citizens i mean citizens alone freedom of speech non-citizens have the right to express themselves in the state they find themselves whether they're citizens or not right to sue and be sued every individual has legal entities uh, every individual of each has legal entity is a legal entity can sue or be sued as a person. So citizens and not citizens enjoy this right to sue and be sued. However, the right to vote and be voted for, or does the right to be voted for, is preserved only for the citizen. We call it franchise. It's only for the citizens. Non-citizens can't enjoy the right to be voted for that is a non-citizen contesting a foreigner contesting for president for member of the house no it's for citizens alone the right to ownership of property falls under which category under the category of what is it civil right that is a uh, natural right rights of every other person in the society apart from the military right of any person natural rights is it social rights right that govern your relations with others is it political rights now it's economic rights example the right to acquire own means of production is an economic right 
So economic right, ownership of property is an economic right. The right to freedom of expression can be limited by that the right to express your view can be limited by is it the legislature? The legislature can limit your freedom of expression in a democratic society as a citizen. The legislature cannot limit your freedom of expression. B, the police does not have the right to limit one's freedom of expression. Let's look at D, insecurity. Oh, yes, I know that insecurity at times depending on the security threat, but normally insecurity legal does not have a legal limitation on freedom of expression. Now, slander, law of slander has a legal limitation on freedom of expression. Yes, you have the right to express, but you don't slander. Remember, slander has to do with making orally a false claim that defames a person's character orally. When it is written, it's called libel. When it incites citizens against the government, it is called seditious activity. So the law of slander itself is a limitation to human right of freedom of expression. So it limits because you can express yourself to the point of slandering another person. You will go in for it. The person has the right to sue you to cause a request for compensation. Human rights abuse can be prevented with the existence of a denying human right. D. Strong intergovernmental relationship. It has nothing to do with preventing human rights abuse. Strong and strong armed force. It can prevent at times even they are the ones that abuse human rights. Well equipped police force does not guarantee the prevention of human rights because even the police force at times the molest citizens and abuse human rights. Of course, when you have an independent judiciary, because the judiciary is responsible for the protection of human rights. So when you have a judiciary that is not under the influence or control of any other body or um, um, arm of government or group, it will dispense justice without fear and favor, and uh, human rights will be guaranteed. That is why independence judiciary is the correct option. Uh, to enhance national question number 13, to enhance national development, parenthood, which is the nucleus of every society, must do what? Regu uh, be regulated by religious clerics, of course. Re religious clerics do not have the right to regulate the parents. B. Relaxed must be relaxed in their responsibilities. Things will go worse when they are relaxed in their responsibility. C. Supported by a leader in government. Of course, uh, for them, um, to enhance national parenthood, which is the new must be support they must not be supported in everything by the government but however they must be civil and morally responsible in order to discharge their duties effectively as responsible parents we are talking about responsible parenthood the quality of responsible parenthood now the beam of yellow color on a traffic light it's an indication to drivers to do what? Now remember we have three uh, traffic lights. We have the red, which means to stop. We have the amber or yellow, which means get ready. We have the green light, uh, the green light, which means go. So get ready to move is as I not to move. Move is green. Stop is red. There is no one that calls you to watch out for other cars. Now, let's look at this. Road signs are usually... Is it punitive and informative? Road signs can be informative, but they are not punitive. 
punitive measures, we are talking about punishment. They are not punitive. Road signs can be informative, but not persuading. Encouragement, no. They are not persuading. Road signs can be regulatory, but not persuasive. We have regulatory signs. We have mandatory signs. We have uh, informative signs. So the answer is it can be regulative, regulatory, and of course it can be informative. So A is the answer. Question number 16. <clears throat> Use the writer below to answer the question. Driving on highways entails being very watchful, observant, and attentive to one's surroundings. Hence, you may run into an object or someone. Most accidents are caused by human factors. From the above statement, it is clear that accidents can be A. Discouraged B. Managed C. Eliminated D. Prevented Now, because if you look at it, most accidents are caused by human factor meaning during driving on the highways if we are being watchful on the highway when driving or using the highway being observant being attentive to one's surroundings we can avoid accidents so we are talking about that accidents can be prevented if we watch if human because they say human factor if humans the road users are watchful observant and attentive to their environment so it's not eliminated it's not uh, managed it's not discussed preventable now traffic regulations are law that mainly a <coughs> i mean let's start from the instruct drivers on the use of traffic signs only is not the only thing they do b i mean c ensure the teaching of road safety in the school it's not the purpose of uh, traffic regulation to teach road safety in school it's not the purpose b to establish agencies for control of traffic is not the main aim then a guide all road users on safety practices of course traffic rules and regulations are laws made by the government to guide all road users for safety on the road and the smooth flow of traffic. So you see that A captures it. Guide all road users on safety practices. Positive interpersonal relation, uh, question number 18. Positive interpersonal relationship mainly promote positive ones. Does it promote competition with one another? Of course, it won't be promoting competition. C. Existence of healthy rivalry. Of course, won't be having rivalry. Do even uh, because we say mainly. D. Acquisition of business ideas. Of course, it's not about it's the main thing it promotes is peaceful coexistence, that is, peaceful living among individuals. A social affiliation between two or more people in the society is known as what? That's social interaction between two or more persons. Is it intercommunal? Now, intercommunal relations, this one is social affiliation between two or more groups or communities. So it's not. Is it inter ethnic relations? We are not talking about relations between two or more ethnic groups. As it inter societal relations, we are not talking about affiliation between two societies, two or more societies. Rather, we are talking about interpersonal relations, which is the interaction between two or more people, that is, affiliation between two or more people in the society. A major achievement, question number 20, a major achievement that can be attributed to good intercommunal relationship in Nigeria is. Major achievement, what does it? It's testing your knowledge on the importance of intercommunal relationship. One, intercommunal relation, does it curtail urban and rural and urban migration? No. Does it promote national and cultural festivals? No. We are talking about national one. C. 
encouraging competition among individuals in the society. That's not what intercommunal relations does. Rather, it promotes peace, mutual understanding, and the development among members of the community. Number 20, well, activities of secret courts are not likely to be prominent in where educational campuses are. Ah, that's where it's most prominent in. And that's, it can be prominent in motor parks, it can be prominent in market squares at times, but it cannot be prominent in religious gathering because there they talk against it. Not that other places don't talk against it, but it can be prominent. There's no room for it there. Number 22, which of the following factors have made political apathy in Nigeria more pronounced? More pronounced. That's responsible for political apathy. Let me start from the use of card readers and complexity of voting procedure. It has not made political apathy more uh, pronounced. In fact, it does not cause political apathy. Uh, the use of card readers. Uh, or complexity of voting procedure can, but this one does not. Indiscriminate registration of parties and illiteracy does not. Of course, illiteracy must register to vote. Poverty can cause Ethnicity does not cause political apathy. Religious fanatism can cause. The long period of dictatorship and the election rigging that makes people to feel that their voting do not their votes uh, do not count. Of course, long period of dictatorship, military dictatorship, those things are responsible for um, political apathy in Nigeria. Combating human trafficking requires the efforts of uh, talking about a government, educational body, religious organization, excluding civil society. Of course, civil society should be in the battle. B government, non governmental agencies, excluding students. A student must be in the battle. It involves everybody. C international bodies. Of course, we need international pressure group and other non-governmental agencies only. Now, the problem with this one option is only. Yes, international body, there must be international cooperation, pressure groups, yes. Other non-governmental agencies, yes, but saying only, no. But look at the individuals, yes. Government, yes. Non-governmental agencies, yes including international bodies yes and he didn't say only so of course this is the correct option when voters exercise their right to vote based on monetary or material inducement the electoral candidates may suffer a eroded legitimacy during elected term b lots of voter support in next election c Loss of party support for another term, the erosion of dividends of democracy. Of course, it's not the elected person will not suffer the erosion of dividends of democracy, the erosion of it. See, it won't suffer loss of party support for another term. It may still get from the party. Loss of voter support in the next election, it may still get. But it, legitimacy will be eroded. Because people know that they didn't support and accept this person. At times, those that voted and got him into power did it out of they bought their conscience. So that is why that acceptability and recognition will not be there. Now let's look at question 25. Political apathy can be addressed by how? How do you make people to start showing interest in political activities of their state? One, selling of votes to the highest bidder. No, criticizing government policies of elector of, uh, it will actually uh, address political party. B, boycotting election campaigns and rally. That is not attending to them. No, of course. D, 
public enlightenment and campaigns, you need to enlighten citizens on the need to show political apathy and the need to begin to participate in the affairs of their state. Legislative arm of government can check the executive by, that's question number 26. Is it withholding the salaries of minister? Remember, legislature has nothing to do with payment of salaries. So it can't do that. B, delay the posting of ambassadors. <coughs> legislature does, uh, does not post ambassadors. Rather, they can approve the appointment, but it's not their responsibility to post. So they can't delay. They don't have that power to do that. <coughs> D, report them to the Supreme Court. C, demand the review of act of the executive. Now, they can do this through their investigative role. They have the power to do investigation, to investigate and even to invite members of the executive for questioning section. So, C is the answer, the bar review of the act of the executive. The Nigerian Federation is divided into how many geopolitical zones? A, 774, that is number of local governments. So they didn't ask you about local government. That is that's number of states. They didn't ask you divided to how many states. Rather, it's six. We have six geopolitical zones. In the north, we have three. North, east, north, west, and north, central. In the south, we have three. We have south, 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 east, and south, west. These are the six geopolitical zones. We don't have four geopolitical zones. The executive, legislative, and judiciary constitute what? Is it forms of government? Forms of government is when you begin to look at democracy, monarchy, oligarchy, gerontocracy, plutocracy, and the rest of them. They are forms of government. Is it tiers of government? Tiers of government are fed, so they are federal, state, and local government. So it's not what we're talking about. Is it systems of government? Systems of government, we are looking at is it federal, unitary, confederal, parliamentary, or presidential? So, rather, these are what we call arms or organs of government. Arms of government are legislative, the executive, and the judiciary. Question number 29 Civil societies act mainly as a link between who and the who? Is the government and the international body? They don't work for the international body. So they don't link the government, link the government and the international bodies. Is it different opposing communities? No. Is it individual divergent interest? No. Is the government and the populace? That is number D. It serves as a link between the government and the people. So and it does this by serving as a channel of information the people get the, uh, give their feedback on government policies and actions to the civil society while the uh, uh, civil society takes it to the government the government does the same through civil society relate to the people through the civil society in some cases then another question says question number 30 says when power is concentrated in one central authority the constitution is said to be what Federal. Federal is when powers are shared between the central government and the component units. So A is not the correct option. C, Republican. Huh? We are talking about when people elect, vote the head of state for a feast. It has, it has nothing to do with uh, centralization of government, a governmental powers. As a D, semi-federal, we don't have what we call, uh, that's basically federal, you know? Rather, unitary is when powers are concentrated in one single or central authority. So such constitution is unitary. Question number 31. Legislations on issues affecting policies on money, policing, and international relations are within the scope of... Now, this tests you on uh, sharing of powers in a federation. Here you have this exclusive list, concurrent list, and residual list. 
Now remember, let me start with residual. A residual list are matters that are of concern to only the regional government. Concurrent lists are matters that are of concern to both the federal and the regional government that they can jointly make laws on this matter example education agriculture transportation <coughs> now exclusive legislative lists are matters that only the central government can make laws on them they are matters that are of concern to only the central government so <coughs> money policing and international relations are within the scope of the concurrent and exclusively they are not on concurrent list they are not on concurrent list they are on the exclusive list so this will not be the answer see residual legislative matter of course they are not in residual at all no these are national issues is it concurrent and residual they are not in concurrent they are not in residual but rather they are only in the exclusive legislative list policing in the case of nigeria money cbm printing of money is a central government concern international relations relation with other states is a central federal government concern question number 32 godfather is in a democrat in a democratic system of government can lead to now godfatherism is a situation where uh, somebody sponsors either a candidate a candidate in an election or put somebody in office and makes the person in that political office to work according to his dictates example somebody sponsors a governor or a president and the president or governor eventually wins and the person who sponsors the person is the godfather and he will dictate what the person in power we do so it can lead to is it national development of course any godfather is working for its selfish interest not societal interest let's see loss of employment of course it will not necessarily affect employment as a citizenship participation people will participate but it can lead to neglect of followers this is a test of knowledge on why leaders fail uh, to address the interests of their followers so godfatherism is one of the factors we taught you what significance of democracy in nigeria is that it promotes what importance of democracy democracy does it promote secularism that is the state not aligning with or supporting or adopting any religion as its official religion so democracy has nothing to do with secularism of a state it does not promote sectionalism that is taking side with a particular ethnic group or section of the country it does not is it regionalism it does not actually promote region rather it promotes constitutionalism that is government being uh, operating according to the dictates of the constitution so democracy promotes it uh, question number 34 execution implementation of government policies are part of the function of is it the military no they protect the country against external aggression is it the civil society they are non-governmental so they are not to implement because anything you see execution and implementation of government policy, that is the executive is it legislature no they make laws they don't execute or implement government policy rather it is the public service that is under the executive arm of government that implements and uh, executes government policies one of the political responsibilities question number 35 one of the political responsibilities of a citizen is is this exercising his or her franchise exercising the rights of franchise b is it participating in social gathering is it engaging in cultural debates joining town board meetings town hall meetings now we are talking about political yes yeah, citizens can join town hall meetings but it's not a political one it's not related to the state can engage in cultural debates not a state matters a state affair participate in social gathering it could be clubs it's not state affairs but exercising the right of franchise that is voting 
in an election is a responsibility of a citizen. Contesting is a responsibility, political responsibility of a citizen. Now we look at question number 36, which says, local government administration promotes dash A, consensus building in governance. No. Responsible government does not necessarily promote responsible government. Responsive government, government that responds to the needs of the people is tempting, but the main purpose of local government is at the grassroots. Grassroots, this is grassroots. So democracy at the grassroots level. So option C is the answer because the local government is created for the grassroots. <clears throat> now this question this sign what does it mean the traffic sign indicated in figure one means what is it non overtaking sign no over no overtaking is not like this is it no crossing it's not like this. is it no stopping it's not like it's no waiting this place this sign refers to no waiting sign that is a symbol that indicates no waiting sign. Now, where will you likely will you likely not find the sign in figure one, uh, figure one in Lomb in Nigeria? Where will you not likely find it? Where you are not uh, where is the place that they won't tell you not to wait? Of course, let's look at the answers. Cut areas are not expected to be waiting there. It's not a waiting place. Military zones. Ha, try it now to wait there in front of military zones and see what will happen. In Nigeria, you will get Koboko. Presidential villa. Hey, don't try. You won't even get near there. Let alone stand there and wait as ha. But shopping malls, you can wait. Of course. Is a place where you can wait. People can even come there to just look around. People can come there, stand there, and wait for somebody. So it's a place that you can wait. But these other places, you don't wait there. So shopping malls is the answer. Number 39, the major aim of youth empowerment program is to do what? Is it to tackle the problem of insecurity and lawlessness? Even though it will help in our security, by reducing crime, but it's not the major aim. Is it to see, provide attitudinal re orientation to the youths? It does, but it's not the major aim. Is it to help youths become good decision makers? It does, but it's not the major aim. The major aim is provide vocational skills so that, to the youth so that they can become independent and enterprise and begin to do something to earn a living. So that is the main aim, the major aim of youth empowerment. Number 40, human trafficking can be described as dash. A, desperate desire by youth to travel abroad for, to a great, for greener pasture. Of course, it's not what we call human trafficking. It's not a sin. It's not even illegal. People travel abroad. In Nigeria, we call it Japa. You must travel. People want to travel for greener pasture. So it's not human trafficking. Expl B. Exploitation of humans in ways their rights are deprived in the course of the movement. Let's look at C. Exploration and adventures in foreign countries. People go for exploration and adventures in foreign countries. If you have the money, you have the right. D. Recruitment of youth are casual workers in this pla in distant places. If you have their concerns, it's not a problem. But when you be exploitation of humans in ways their rights are deprived, because you, you have to take at times you have to kidnap them. Of course, their rights are uh, forced prostitution is there, rape, torture in such a way their rights are deprived in the course of the movement. Of course, that is human trafficking. Of course, you, you, the kidnapping is part of it. Question number 41 says, traffic regulations are mainly meant for all 
the pedestrians only know that is hey, not the answer is it truck drivers are they the only ones using road traffic regulations are meant for all road users that is p pedestrians are part of road users they are not the only road users. truck drivers are part of road users they are not the only road users private drivers are part of road users but we are talking about road users all road users here Question number 42, when opposition communities come together, opposing communities come together rather, to discuss a way out of pending feud, that is disagreement, the action can, the action is best described as, remember, you have test your knowledge on ways of resolving intercommunal conflict. And of course, you have uh, cooperation is not what we are talking about here. Rather, it's a dialogue, roundtable community between two opposing, roundtable discussion between two opposing communities. Now, it is not arbitration. Arbitration involves a third party that will come and uh, make a pronouncement that the parties must follow. It is not peacekeeping. Peacekeeping involves a third party. And that is when there is war. That's when you send peacekeeping. So dialogue is the correct option. 43. Authority that is recognized by the law of the land is called, is it religious authority? Religious authority is not recognized by the constitution. Is it a consultative authority? It's not. We don't have anything like that. Is it constituted authority? Charismatic authority is based on one in net policy. Rather, this is what we call constituted authority. 44. Which of the following values will likely cause harm to the society? Which one will cause harm? Now, meaning that of all these options, we are looking at the negative value here. Tolerance will not cause harm. Indiscipline will cause harm in the society. Politeness will not cause harm now. Fair play will not cause harm. It's indiscipline that can cause harm. <clears throat> now, carefully study the following list of civic education terms 1 to 7 below and use them to answer the question. One is HIV AIDS, two law and order, three political apathy, four human trafficking, five popular participation, C responsible parenting, and then seven fundamental human rights. Now the major reasons some countries are termed developing results from that's what causes some countries to be tagged as developing country now hiv is there in every country so it's not the indices of targeting a country developing or not developing now is the law and order does Okay, let's look at the options. Is it three and uh, six? Three and six are political apathy and the six responsible parent in. Now, these things can make, of course, political apathy can bring about underdevelopment. When people don't participate and give the wrong leaders um, power, it can bring about underdevelopment. Now, this one, six, is talking about responsible parenting. Result from it. So, when you have a responsible parenting, it can have effect. Now, this one, IV, is uh, human trafficking, V, is popular participation. They don't have a bearing on why a country is regarded as developing. Is it C? I mean, II, that is law and order, and VII, fundamental human rights. 
then is it D, V, I, V, that is popular participation, and V, I, that is responsible parenting. So the ones that can affect, uh, can, uh, and the major reasons some countries are time developing result from is based on this, A, that is political apathy and the rules of responsible parenting. That is it, whether they are playing their role well or not playing their role well. So we take A. Carefully study, okay, non-negotiable entitlements of every individual are, every individual on earth are, now remember, entitlement is fundamental human rights, must be there, that is VII, -I. and of course, people are entitled to responsible parenting, so C is there is the correct option a which is i i law and order and v that is popular participation is not entitlement to every individual on earth law and order depends on the activities of government and even the governed so it's not an entitlement b i i that is law and order and v i i that is um Fundament uh, uh, V I I I. No, we don't have V I. Rather, right? mm -hmm. we have V I I. Fundamental human rights law. Or that is not an entitlement. Human rights and entitlement. C V I. That is responsible parent is an entitlement. And V I I. Fundamental human rights. This is the correct answer. D says I I I. That is political apathy is not an entitlement. V I. Responsible is an so C is the answer. Now, from the above list, the two experiences of an individual that requires counseling, who are those that require counseling? Of course, those that go through human trafficking require counseling. Those that have HIV require counseling. That is I and IV. I and IV, that is D. A, I, 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 that is political apartheid. It's an enlightenment, not counseling is what you do individually. Then V, popular participation does not require counseling. B, I, is, um, <coughs> that is HIV, yes, requires counseling. But V, I, I, fundamental human rights does not require counseling. C, I, I, that is law and order, does not require counseling. And I, 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 that's political, does not require counseling. So it is uh people that are victims of hiv aids and victims of human trafficking that is i and iv that require counseling next question question number 48 says the major reason for citizens reorientation in civic education why people need reorientation in civic education is is it a i i that is law and order and v popular participation of course people don't need it because of land order they may need it because it is important they participate b i i i that is political party and v v is popular participation of course they need um citizens orientation to show political apathy and be involved in popular participation c says vi that is responsible parenting and vii that is fundamental human right is not the street reasons for citizens orientation in civic education this says hiv aids and the law and order so the answer is political apathy and popular participation The search of a citizen's residence by the police without a warrant or court order amounts to breach of his or her right to his life, or it does not affect the person's life. It does not uh, take away that person's life. 
Is it freedom of expression? You know, it, it does not affect freedom of expression. Is it freedom of conscience? Of course, it does not. It's right to privacy that is violated when police decide to cite your house without warrant from the court of law. So it's the right to privacy that is breached. Then finally, question 50, the unpleasant attitudes towards people living with HIV AIDS is, is termed, is it playing safe? No, it's not what we call it, that people are playing the attitude a negative attitude to people is a bit towards the living with HIV is we can't we don't call it playing safe <clears throat> we don't call it civic neglect we don't call it human rights abuse rather what we call it is stigmatization stigmatization is that unpleasant or negative attitude or discriminatory attitude people is a bit against those living with HIV AIDS thank you for being with me in this section Thank you once again. I wish you good luck in your examination.